Ernest Lawrence Thayer, an American poet, wrote the poem Casey at the Bat, which was published by the Daily Examiner in 1888. This poem is a comic ballad, and it celebrates the sport of baseball and documents closely the finishing moments of a thrilling game. Ernest Lawrence Thayer was born in 1863. and he passed away in 1940 he wrote under the pen name finn and was a graduate of harvard university at harvard he was the editor of harvard lampoon and a member of the theatrical society hasty pudding between 1886 and 1888 thayer was a humor columnist for the san francisco examiner they are also contributed to several other comic poems for the newspaper new york journal this poem narrates the story of the final half inning of a baseball game at the outset the team mudville is losing they have only scored two goals as against the opponents who have made four goals so the score is 2-4 2 for mudville half time is over two opening players kuni and barrows are out and the supporters are silent after two opening players got out some people left the stadium in despair however still some hoping that things can turn in mudville's favor decided to stay back they had high hopes for their star player casey they were confident that if casey bats well Mudville can win. Spectators waited for Casey to come and bat, but Flynn preceded Casey, and Jimmy Blake also came before him. Flynn was called a hoodoo, which suggests that a player whose presence is considered as a bad luck. Superstitions and beliefs we know have an impact on the game. people tend to call some players lucky and some players unlucky jimmy on the other hand was referred to as a cake as a player who was uncertain with his skill the spectators were not confident about flynn and jimmy blake the spectators here has been referred to as multitude who sat sadly thinking that casey may be would not get to bat beyond the expectations of the spectators flynn and jimmy played well flynn drove for a single and blake tore the cover of the ball with his shot jimmy and flynn succeeded in getting to second and third bases which meant that casey would get a chance to bat 5000 people started shouting yelling as their most favorite player advanced to bat they cheered for casey the shrieks and the noise rumbled rattled pounded and recoiled as casey walked up to take his turn casey appeared to be at ease he was looking quite comfortable in his place his face was lit with a smile and overall there was a sense of pride as a mark of respect for the cheering crowd he lightly doffed his hat the happiness joy and high spirit made it quite evident that casey had finally arrived to bat to begin his game he rubbed his hands with dirt and 10000 eyes watched him do so when he wiped his hands on his shirt 5000 tongues that is 5000 people praised him when the pitcher in an attempt to strike out the batter took the ball one could see that casey was resistant disobedient and he spoke in a contemptuous and mocking manner the ball here referred to as leather covered sphere hurled through the air casey stood in an unfriendly and unapologetic manner there the ball went with a speed and casey could not hit casey in his arrogance shouted 
that aren't my style however by this time the umpire gave his ruling strike one so that was the first strike for casey as he missed the ball inside the stadium people roared in anger and shouted at the umpire the anger of the spectators was like the beating of the storm waves casey however raised his hand to calm the crowd down casey was happy to see that the crowd listened to him his face shone with a smile of christian charity he could still and quieten the loud noise of the excited crowd to let the game go on once again for the second time the pitcher bowled this time again casey ignored and umpire gave the ruling strike 2 as casey had missed the ball again 5000 people were mad at the umpire and shouted fraud fraud but casey gave them a scornful look and the people were silent in awe but this time instead of a smile casey's face had become stern and it was cold tension could be felt his muscles looked strained but spectators still had faith in him they were sure that casey would not let the ball go again in this stanza one can see a change in the body language of casey his sneer and unkindness had gone but his teeth seemed to be clenching in hate his heart pounded with cruel violence as he got ready to bat again he knew that if he missed the third time he would be struck out the pitcher again held and let go of the ball but casey was unable to swing and hit just the air was shattered by his blow casey's overconfidence and decision not to swing at the first two pitches was a downfall but it signaled the victory for his opponents mudwill had finally lost the game as casey was declared strike out for the opponents it was a day of celebration the band played and the sun shone brightly for them but there was no joy for mudwill this poem is not about victory but it is about how overconfidence and arrogance can lead to downfall casey failed to hit the ball three times though he was considered to be a superb player and was dismissed the poem moves from moments of loss of hope to excitement and ends with disappointment it gives a beautiful message that one needs to remember that arrogance definitely leads to failures